Good morning, everyone. Um, we're here to announce that uh, this morning we filed uh, two charges related to this case. One count of capital murder for the deaths of William Coperon and Reed Underwood, and one count of first degree premeditated murder in the death of Teresa Lamano. Uh, the bond is now currently set at $10 million. Uh, his first appearance is today at 1.30 at the Johnson County Courthouse. What I can answer is questions related to the charges and the court proceedings, but once again, uh, ethically, I cannot discuss the particular facts and evidence in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up to any questions you might have. Um, it is too early to make that decision. That is an option under the first count of capital murder. The options for the sentence are life without parole, or if we choose, we file a notice of uh, requesting a death penalty. That uh, is something that we don't have to file when we file the charges. That is a, uh, I don't take that decision lightly, and that decision will be made after we get all the facts and evidence of this case, because we want to make an informed decision before that is done. Um, you'll be handed a copy of the complaint, and under the capital murder uh, charge, there are different options that allow for capital murder. Um, one of them is that the same act or transaction, and that's what we've alleged in this case. Um, both the, uh, Mr. Corporon and Mr. Underwood were killed in a short period of time, and so that makes it eligible for capital murder. Under Kansas law, that has to be charged, even though two people died, it, it's charged as one count of capital murder. Um, and then there was a separation in time, and that's when Teresa Lamano was killed, and that is why there's a second count of premeditated first-degree murder. But is it then tried as one event? Yes. All three deaths? Well, there's two separate counts. Right. The first two deaths um, by Mr. Coperon and Mr. Underwood would be uh, really one count, and so we would go for one charge under those two deaths. And that's how the capital murder charge is laid out in Kansas. Steve, is there any other indication that, does everything to this point now show that the perpetrator acted alone or were there some associates involved? Um, I think the chief indicated, I believe yesterday, um, that uh, we are still actively investigating this case. I know federal and, and local law enforcement is doing that. Uh, at this time, we don't have any understanding of anybody else involved in these acts. But again, it's still an active investigation. We're less than 48 hours in, so uh, we're not going to close the door as of now. So just what's the difference between capital murder and premeditated murder in terms of penalties or standard of proof? Sure. The, the change in or the difference in penalties is in Kansas law, first degree premeditated murder, it's life and you're not eligible for parole until 25 years. Capital murder, the two options are life without parole, which basically means you don't even get to see the parole board. Um, it's a life sentence um, or the death penalty. So the difference is basically your eligibility to see the parole board. We, we filed charges first. Um, what will happen is he'll go through the state proceedings and complete that. And then after we complete the, the state trial proceedings, and then he would be turned over to the federal uh, prosecutors. Um, so that's generally what happens. We can't transport them back and forth between the two jurisdictions. So you filed first. Yes. Yeah, and you might you might you might recall that, um, and I think I may have mentioned this yesterday. You know, during the, the uh, Oklahoma City bombings, that was a case that was uh, prosecuted federally as well as at the, at the local level. So it's it's not unusual. Well, one of the reasons is. Uh, most on most occasions state prosecutors we are our system's a little bit more nimble we can move a little bit quicker than the federal jurisdiction and so um, it's appropriate you know um, we've alleged that he's come into the community that I've been elected to, to protect um, he's committed some terrible crimes and this is why the people of Johnson County have elected me to protect our interests and our people and so uh, I'm going to fulfill those duties but it's up to your discretion. You guys talked about Oh, absolutely. Barry and I have talked about this and, and how we're going to proceed on this, and uh, there's no animosity between the two of us. No.